Good afternoon, Doctors Without Borders. My name is Christopher Connor, and I'm here representing the Life Straw Project by Vertigard Franson. And um, I'm here to speak about how uh, this revolutionary new water filtration product can be used, um, not just commercially here in the United States, but more importantly, all across the world. Um, Recently, the past two years, I've been working all across the world, head of distribution for charitable work for Life Straw, and um, uh, I've just gotten back from Jordan, where um, they are facing serious consequences from the Syrian revolution. Here's a picture of the conditions that people are living at, and um, obviously water is scarce, um, and whichever water is there, is um, just a cesspool of disease and bacterial infections, waterborne diseases, stuff like diarrhea. And um, unfortunately, due to the revolution, uh, there's no public health left in Syria. So many of the people leaving are leaving for medical reasons. There's no more immunizations. There's no doctors to you know, take care of any long-term chronic diseases and they end up displaced and uh, it's just a real tragedy. Um, so now I'm going to talk about Vestigar Franzen. Uh, our company is geared towards charitable work but we are for profit. We, um, our main goal is to create products that help save lives. And uh, we invest heavily in frontier scientific information. We work um, cohesively with the CDC colleagues and ministries of health all over the world and have a lot of um, scientists and engineers under our employment. Uh, our greatest breakthrough so far has been the life straw. We also have mosquito nets, which have made huge progresses in uh, um, decreasing the amount of malaria all across the world, but the live straw has been our major thing. In fact, uh, it won 2005 Time Magazine's most important invention. Um, so now I'm going to move into how it works after I've given you a little brief overview of what Francent does. It's really just simple, and that's the main thing that makes this this product stand out from everything else. The only mechanism you need to make the water come through is just suction from your own mouth. Um, as you can see up here, uh, you just put your mouth on the capsule, you suck in, and uh, the water gets pulled through small little fibers at the base of the straw. And as they come up the fibers, the pressure increases and then they get filtered through these tiny little microtubules and all of the pathogens are removed and then the water that comes out is completely pure and drinkable. You could, you could go up to pond scum and just drink it. Um, you might wonder like what happens to all the stuff that gets stuck in there. You simply just have to blow back out and it ejects. So it, it lasts indefinitely, not indefinitely, but for a very, very long time. Oh. Okay, so there are, and I'm going to focus on refugee areas because, you know, doctors without borders, I'm sure you will be mobilizing many, many more doctors in Syria in the coming months. And, you know, in, in the previous situations like this, this is in Africa, um, I think in Kenya, where uh, the status quo, according to the UN, is that They'll bring in these huge semi-trucks full of water, take them miles and miles and miles away from lakes or whatever, freshwater lakes, take them to open water treatment plants where they just put a bunch of chlorine, iodine in, and the, they don't even get all of the contaminants out. So it's, it's a very, if, they don't release the cost figures, but you can only imagine that it's just an astronomical expense. Um, they have to protect the water sources as they travel, 
And then once they get set up, they have to make sure that you know nobody comes in and tries to take advantage of that resource. Um, also, there's high-tech filtration systems. This is often used by organizations like the Red Cross. And they will bring these, these very, very expensive products overseas and then they'll leave them to the communities to use but they don't have proper knowledge or know-how. They don't, they don't understand um, how to upkeep these uh, machines and they are very susceptible to breaking down and it's, it's not cost effective at all. These machines go for like hundreds of thousands of dollars and uh, compared to the live straw, um, commercially in the United States you can get the live straw for $20. But when you buy in bulk, we sell to NGOs, we sell to multinational governments like the UN, or just governments like Kenya, for example. In Kenya, we have provided safe water for 4.5 million people for the past five years. And that's just through life straw services. And that's just a testament to how it must be a low cost opportunity or else they would have found another way to do it. Um, basically, the simplicity of the live straw, especially in refugee areas where displacement might continue to occur, um, say they have a filtration center or they have one of those high-tech um, filtration things and then something happens, they have to move further, they have to get away from the conflict area, they can't just pick up all that stuff and go. With the life straw, it is like a two ounce straw. You can just take it with you, no matter what happens, no matter where you have to go, whatever you have to do. It's just so simple and so easy. And there's no replacement parts or anything else. So it just really trumps all of the problems from you know status quo ways of doing this. Um, here's an example. You can just you know, drink straight out of pond scum with these straws and uh, they last for a very long time. At least a thousand uh, liters. But if the water quality is a little bit better, then it can go pretty much indefinitely. Because, you know, if you have a whole bunch of dirt that you're sucking up, then uh, it, it will decrease the shelf life of your product. But as long as it's not completely nasty, you could go for 4,000 liters or even longer. Um, so, I would like to, uh, I don't see any reason not to invest in the live straw, uh, especially for the work that you're going to be doing, Doctors Without Borders, um, going overseas and you're going to be dealing with people who have to change their location frequently. They have to uh, move around and they can't rely on this high tech stuff. It, it's not feasible to their, to their infrastructure. And um, I will be taking, uh, I would like everybody to sign um, their support at the end, all MDs who will be going out on the field and that's the main thing that we need to get everybody else in your organization to get some gross funding into this product. We don't only have life straw, we have family filtration systems, filtration systems for 100,000 cubic liters. And the more and more opportunities we have for investment, the cheaper our products will get. And uh, so yeah. We also have some uh, examples set up over there by the exit, which you are free to examine for yourselves. Uh, thank you very much. It's a, it has been a pleasure to represent Vindigar Franson today. Uh, and I hope you all have a very good evening. And uh, I appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank you.